But you know how the story originally broke? A Packers podcaster named Big B. Shout out, Big oh, B. Jamal Williams is inside the 30, out in front, a Green Bay touchdown. Jamal Williams is the GOAT and the GOAT. That's all you need to know. Yeah, let's keep it under 25 minutes, all right? We might be too young to have a spotted cow, but we are both diehard Packers fans. Welcome back into the Underage Packers podcast. This is episode 146. We've got the Vikings on hand this week. I'm Joey, and joining me to preview this game, as always, is my friend Big B. How are we feeling almost midway through the season now, Big B? Um, I just want to win, you know. I, I need at least one more. Yeah, I want to feel good for at least one whole week for a change. That would be fantastic. Yes, this podcast is just slowly becoming Big B's unofficial therapy, except I don't offer good advice. I just yeah, tell him to. True. I just tell him to calm down because I'm in. I'm, I'm in the same situations. I'm just having his feelings not as exaggerated at, as he is. Oh, um. Yeah. So yeah. So, um. Now, Big B, you are obviously not in front of your usual background of your random Packers trinkets. Um. You are in Minnesota, but I I did just want to make sure you know that the game is being played at Lambeau Field in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Are you aware of that? I am aware of that. I am. Okay. Explain to the folks why you are in Minneapolis, Minnesota then. Yeah. Well, tonight, as we were recording this, I'm going to the Queen and Adam Lambert concert at the Exile Center. So I'm very excited. Mm. Queen was my, my first favorite like band. So, you know, I'm I'm very pumped. I don't know why I assumed it was at US Bank Stadium. Uh, but I guess is Exile Center where the um where the Timberwolves and the Wild play? Yes. Okay, gotcha. How far are is the arena away from the stadium? Are they pretty uh, close to each other? I don't think so. Okay. I mean, I mean, it's like probably like under like 10 minutes, but... Yeah, okay. They are in, both in Minneapolis. Yeah. But, so the, the team for Minnesota, the football team, is... Uh, bad. They are terrible. The Minnesota Vikings. We know this. This is not new information. So we're going to be previewing this game as the Vikings take on another bad team in the Green Bay Packers. Um, so let's head right into it. Um, you know, I think we talked about this the last time we played the Vikings, but just like the rivalry this has become is interesting. And I think like a, a, a part that the rest of the league doesn't realize of how big of a rivalry this has become and like to me i don't view it in the same way that i view most rivalries like going into this vikings game i'm not like oh wow it's perfect it's a rivalry game it's that we can always bet on a good game for this no i hope like i wish nothing but the worst for (laughs) minnesota vikings fans like i i hate everything about this team um and it all started I think, you know, there's been a lot that has led to this in the 2000s. You know, um, in the 20th century, it, it, it seemed like there it was always kind of a one-sided thing. You know, the Vikings were amazing in the 70s, got to four Super Bowls, did not win a single one. <laughs> um, and then obviously the Packers had the 60s and the 90s on lock. Um but now in the 2000s, both teams, like, you know, the Packers have obviously had more success, but the two teams have kind of gone back and forth on who is, um, you know, the clear leader of the NFC North. And like I said, the Packers have had way more success, but there has been some some stingy, stingy times uh, for both of these teams. Um, you know, you look at 2008, the, the Favre saga, uh, both of those games. Um, and then going into all the way to 2017, where Rodgers gets hurt against Anthony Barr. I had a viral, my first viral YouTube moment after that injury. <laughs> uh, I posted like a five minute video. I was like 12 years old and probably on the verge of tears. I think I titled it like Angry Packers Fan Reacts to Aaron Rodgers Injury. Um, oh, that video was gold. I loved that video. <laughs> I think I, I watched that like 10 times. It's probably still up. If I I might have to bear through the embarrassment to play a clip of that right now. So if I, <laughs> if I do find a clip, it will play now. I was not expecting to make a video at all today. 
But then Anthony Barr did something to Aaron Rodgers. Yes. Like, do not tell me he did not hit him after he thought. I'm going to show you a screenshot right now. The ball was out and Anthony Barr was still running after him. Are you kidding me? You have to be at a certain level of dumbness to think that he didn't hit him late on purpose. And it was not to get Aaron Rodgers out for the season. That's great. Absolutely wonderful. But yeah, I think he got a couple thousand views. And the most impressive part about that was the fact that we, both of us, in fact, we didn't know each other at the time, but we had tickets to that Saints game the next week for mm -hmm. Brett Hundley's first career start as a Packer. And it was actually, it was a solid game. And it was actually right around this time, I think, like, I got a Facebook memory last week. I think it was the 21st, somewhere around this time of the year uh, for that Saints game. Packers had a solid lead at half and then just blew it in the second. And, you know, we, um, Aaron Jones had kind of a breakout game. He had, like, a 60-yard touchdown. Uh, Drew Brees looked pretty terrible that day, had two interceptions in the first half. Um, but anyways, you guys. Went to the Bond House even, too. Oh, the Bond House, man. What was up with the Packers in, like, the late 2010s where they just wanted to bring back, like, every good cornerback they had in the early 2010s? They are like, ah, oh, we'll bring back to Bond House. We'll bring back to Bond Williams. Why not? Yeah, I don't weird. know. I, I think the corner room was just that bad that we're like, hey, <laughs> yeah. they used to play for us, and they were good, kind of. Bring them back and see if they still got that magic in them. I'm I'm still hoping they'll bring back to Marius Randall one of these days. <laughs> I hope so. We love him. Do we? Do no, we, we don't. But anyway. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so that was another reason why we were mad about that that Rogers injury. And I mean, it just looked like that 2017 season was going to be something special um, up until that Vikings game week six. I I do not like Vikings fans. But yeah. Um, I, I love trolling Vikings fans. I remembered um, the Vikings social accounts, like during the preseason, they posted a picture of Justin Jefferson doing pre a warmups. I don't think he was even playing, but like he just made an amazing catch or something. And the Vikings posted that photo with the caption uh, early candidate for photo of the year. And I quote tweeted it with the picture of Jair gritting over um, Justin Jefferson laying down on the field and I said well this is awkward because this was actually taken on January 1st so I was proud of that made a lot of Vikings fans mad uh which is always a fun thing to do uh so that's that on the rivalry and our hatred for most Vikings fans um but into this game here the Packers are five four and one in the last 10 matchups um and I mean to be fair they the Packers Vikings games are always interesting to watch. Uh, I think of the game in 2019 where they clinched the division. Uh, you have that iconic picture of Zadarius and Preston Smith. I'm going to tear up just thinking about it where they do their celebration where like they, they jump up and kick in there. It's, it's so awesome. Um, that was an amazing game. Um, oh, yeah. And then obviously the one you mentioned of last year on New Year's Day where we beat them like 41 to 13. Best game of that year by far. Aaron Rodgers, best right. performance of his last season as a Packer. Um, that was a lot the of fun. Vontae Adams, last touchdown as a Green Bay Packer also. Uh, well, we're talking about two different games then. Uh, are? I'm what? talking about the one from like this this January 1st. The 2022 yeah. season. Devontae Adams was not on the Packers in 2022, Big B. What? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> what am I talking about? Oh, brother. Uh, yeah. Okay. Never mind. Yeah. Okay. Anyways. But yeah. Devontae Adams had his last touchdown catch as a Packer versus the Vikings at some point. I don't know what year anymore, clearly. Yes. But, yeah, that happened. 2021, yes. I believe you're right yeah. on that. Uh, but yeah, then there's also the flip side of the Vikings have had some really great performances against the Packers. So uh, th this should be an interesting game, despite the fact that both these teams only have two wins on the season. Uh, Packers come into this one as uh, 1.5 underdogs into this game. Interesting. Uh, I wonder, 
This is a stat that Rob Domofsky would have. The last time the Packers were underdogs in a a game at Lambeau Field, I, and I feel like this has to be not the first time this season that has happened. So I wonder when's the last season that has happened. Um, probably in 2018. Probably. Um, but yeah, so Packers, 1.5 underdogs. And can we just talk about, like, our general vibes at this point in the season. Cause I posted last night, I, the Packers social account, they posted like excitement is growing for the game on Sunday night. And like, I sent that to our group chat. I was like, eh. yeah, is it, no? is it, is, is the growing excitement in the room with us? Um, I'm not, uh, the I have excitement because, I'm a Packers fan, but I don't know if it's growing for this game. It is yeah. It is at a stagnant, we'll see what happens mood uh throughout the rest of the season, I think. Uh, yeah, I mean I mean I'm excited, but like I'm definitely not looking forward to it. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like I'm excited for the game. I'm excited for everything that's about to happen. I'll probably be super excited by the time the game kicks off and during yes. the game. But like right now, I am I really don't care if it comes or doesn't at this point which yeah. is, sounds really weird me, me saying that but yeah yeah so i quote tweeted the packers last night and i said update excitement is questionable for the remainder of the packers season <laughs> not only for like the the joke to make that excitement is questionable but also like the fact that they have had so many injuries so i got a little bit i i knew i was going to draw some uh criticism for that tweet especially from some old heads who wanted to tell me how bad it was in the 70s and didn't know how i had it uh a yeah. few people call me a fair weather fan and that's whatever but i don't see that look i i just think my definition of a fair weather fan is different because I will still be watching every single game they play this season. And for the rest of time, uh, as my, my job allows, um, but... you know, one thing, one, okay. One thing I'm going to bring up here, okay. um, is when people like bring up like, Oh, well, welcome back to the seventies. Oh, look, we're back in the seventies and eighties. Like that thing that is just getting so old. Like, do they realize I mean, how old that is getting? Well, I mean, shoot, if I survived those two decades of miserable time, I think I would bring it up like I had a purple heart uh, <laughs> every time, every chance I could. I don't know. It's but, it's it's getting over. It's overused, I mean, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. And I mean, I don't I'm not an expert on those 70s and 80s times, um, but I feel like this is a different situation. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it could it could very well lead into that, but I feel like there are smarter people in the twelve sixty five offices than there was uh, all those decades ago. Oh yeah, and we don't have Bart Starr and Forrest Gregg controlling the uh, front office yeah. and all that nonsense. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's that's the vibe check for the Packers this week. Uh, and with that, let's talk about this Broncos game that happened last weekend. Um, it went, unfortunately, just had my worst expectations I had set for it. The Packers only scored 17 on a defense that, by the numbers, is one of the worst ever. Like, one of the worst that numbers have ever tracked. The Packers only scored 17. They got shut out in the first half. So, yeah. That sums it up pretty well. And again, they just in the first half look abysmal and it's becoming too much of a problem uh, that they cannot do anything on offense in the first half. Um, And Matt LaFleur does not seem to have a good answer for it. Um, So that Broncos game, you know, just confirmed all of our all of our fears about what this Packers team really is. Um, Jordan Love did not have a great performance. He uh, and, okay, okay. Wait a well, second. Jo- well, okay. I well, mean, the last. Okay, go can go on. Go on. What are you going to say? Okay, I I well, I'm going to trash Jordan Love a bit, and you might not be happy with it. Uh, but we are far way off 
from his week one dazzling performance against the Chicago Bears. Um, like I don't I would be I would really like to say he's the guy and I'd really like to have confidence in him, but this is his fourth year in the NFL. He sat three years behind Aaron Rodgers, and I know we're only seven games in, but like the whole thing with him was okay, like he yes, he did throw for 17 interceptions in his senior year at Utah State, but hopefully sitting by Andy Aaron Rodgers, being three years in the NFL, getting that coaching will fix that up. Um, you know, and and the caveat to him throwing those 17 interceptions was the fact that he also had really, really electric plays. He could do unbelievable stuff, um, could throw it deep, could make unbelievable passes. But we're seeing a lot more of the mistakes than we are of the unbelievable good passes. And that is not a survivable method for an NFL quarterback. Um, so he's got to get it together. Um, now what I think you were going to bring up is the fact that his offensive line did play terrible, that his, he does not have the best situation with his wide receivers, that basically what we talked about, you know, this off season, we talked about that basically Aaron Jones is the offense that Aaron Jones has not been healthy at all this season, besides the three first three quarters of the season. So there is some circumstances that should be considered however he's still got to get it together he's got one year left on his contract after this and the nfl like not much patience is afforded to quarterbacks so i mean and if the packers end up in the top 10 and picks i mean you're telling me they're not going to consider looking at a a drake may or whoever is available whenever they pick i don't know man i don't know um so he's got what 10 games now left to prove that the Packers should continue to keep faith in them. Um, so yeah, and it, it just seems like the Packers are already just with their playing calling are starting to lose a little bit of faith in them. And the first half against Denver, so many just short passes that did not work at that. Um, so and, and they've just dialed it down from those early weeks. So look, I you know how much I want Jordan Love to succeed, how the past four years I have banged the drum for him, have defended him so hardly, but he's he's got to step it up. Uh, so that's that. And I will now hand the floor to you, Big B. Well, uh, yeah, you kind of kind of kind of stole everything I was about to say, <laughs> so I'm not going to go that. too far, but. If I see if I see like one more, you know, wide receiver screen, like I am going to jump out my window. I'm so oh. tired of watching 75 wide receiver screens in the first half. I don't I don't know what we're doing, well, but you got to figure it out. <laughs> I mean, like the Packers have lost faith in him, which is frustrating because now he doesn't get a chance to show off what he can do. But also like I mean, in the first few weeks he did not like he had I would say he was completing like 15% of passes over 20 yards. Yikes. Like I mean I I don't know. I I, I would argue though that they should continue to just let him let him whip it. Um yeah. because that's really the only way you're going to be able to find out what he's truly capable of. But also like yeah, I mean I, I don't know. It just yeah, the Packers. Uh, I don't know what Matt Lafleur thinks of Jordan Love at this point, and but look, I, there's no reason to completely write him off yet. Um, we, and, you know, and like versus Denver, he didn't play that bad. Like it, it, but like most of his passing attempts were like in within five yards, mm-hmm. and it was a bunch of screen plays that didn't go anywhere. But he, I mean, and in the the second half, I thought he, did, I thought he did well. I mean, I don't think he played like his best ball, but I thought he played decently well sure. to put us in the best position to win. Yeah, and that's all, pretty much all we're asking him to do this year. But sure. that, I mean, that final drive, he did not. That was not pretty at all, especially yeah. that last throw. Yeah, he's he's just got to get better. I mean, for I mean, we do have to like 
you know, look at our criticisms of Aaron Rodgers last year and through the last mm-hmm. few years of his career, like uh, of playing hero ball. And yeah, Jordan does a better job of that. You know, he's not going 20 yards on every third and short, but I mean, the interceptions that ended both the Raiders and the Broncos games are just poor decisions on his part of trying to hit the home run without considering that, you know, there is three outfielders right there or whatever. I'm not good enough at baseball to make a good analogy there, but I like, I mean, he's just got to make better decisions and um, Ben Slowick over at the Reiner had an excellent article this week talking about Jordan Love, his uh, lack of decision-making and also just the dynamics of where the Packers and Jordan Love find themselves for this year and the future. So, that's that. Um, I mean, I do want to say though, like nobody wants Jordan to succeed as much as I do. Uh, I mean, I, I, you know, have a, a shirt of him as a cartoon. I have a magnet of him on my fridge. I want him to be the quarterback for this next generation. Yes. Um, but he's he he's got to put it together sooner rather than later. Yes, I will. I will end this off by saying, no matter what happens at like the rest of the season, I do think we'll draft a quarterback very high. I don't know if it'll be in the first round, Whoa. but at least the second to fourth round, I would say we get a get a quarterback, have Jordan for next season, and have him fight in camp, have a little quarterback battle. Whoever wins that, you know, I don't know. That's what I think is going to happen, but I'm not very smart either. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're saying no matter what Jordan does these last few games, that uh, they'll draft a quarterback no matter what? Well, or it depends. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, if he goes like how he's playing outside yeah. like the Bears game, like we'll probably draft a quarterback. And I think that's smart, anyways. Yeah. Like some point in the draft, at least kind of higher, anyway. Yeah, I mean, I think he does need some competition. Yeah, I mean, they drafted Brian Brom in 2008 to compete with Aaron Rodgers, and Brom was in the second round. Um, And yeah, I mean, I I would not hate that one bit. Um, Yeah, I mean, Jesus. The, the, The frustrating thing about it is that if they do, like, I mean, you know, hell, if they end up with the second overall pick and end up taking Drake May, like, it's going to be so frustrating to see everybody clowning on the Packers for, you know, like investing a lot in Jordan love and his potential, you know, in in a year coming off of being a top Super Bowl contender, they drafted a quarterback in the first round, didn't do anything to help themselves immediately, which is a a fair criticism, even though I disagree with that. And the fact that, you know, the, the whole Packer way is looking out for, now in the future just to maximize your chances in every year instead of going all in uh, you know they they make the pick they you know people will love to argue they they drove Aaron Rodgers out of town uh but honestly no they what they got out of Aaron Rodgers from the Jordan Love pick they got two MVP seasons from Rodgers because he is yeah. has unbelievable competitiveness loves to have a yeah. ship on his shoulder i you could argue that the Jordan Love decision made Aaron Rodgers had a big impact on Aaron Rodgers 2020 and 2021 MVP seasons and then like it was time to move on after 2022 but they invested a lot of Jordan Love if they do end up taking the quarterback high in this next draft people are going to clown on them for doing that uh but to me I am still I'm completely fine with them taking a quarterback in 2020 I like the process I like the idea however Brian Gutekinds and his staff have not done a great job of evaluating quarterbacks um, in in total. You know, they this was before Brian took over, but they loved Deshaun Kaiser coming out of Notre Dame. They loved Drew Locke coming out of M-I-Z-Z-O-U. Um, and like, and there are some other ones along the way that they allegedly were big fans of that have not turned out. Now, hopefully Jordan is the opposite of that. Hopefully he is the outlier, but they have not done a great job at evaluating quarterbacks and, you know, good against like, uh, I mean, I, I guess well, let's, let, let's talk about good against a little bit um, too, because like not only 
like he put a lot of his job stake in Jordan. Um, and that's turning out interesting. Like there's a lot to play out there till still. Uh, but also just the fact that where the Packers find themselves now, where they have a really young team and it is not working how they hope to. And it, it is time, you know, a lot of Gudikin's drafts now have passed the point where it's time we can fairly evaluate them. Um, and, and let's just read off his his first and second round picks every year since he took over. 2018, Jair Alexander, second round, Josh Jackson. One for two right there. Jair, you know, that was great of him, how he maneuvered that to get that trade. Uh, Ernest, another draft pick in the next draft in 2019. He gets Rashawn Gary, massive hit. He gets Arnell Savage. No, not great. Uh, that's an absolute miss. They traded up to get Darnell at pick 21. Second round, get Elton Jenkins. Good, maybe not as good as we initially thought in his first two seasons. 2020, Jordan Love, A.J. Dillon. I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, yeah. hey, all that, that second round one is definitely a thumbs down. Jordan Love, though, is yeah. yet to see. Then you have Eric Stokes, who has, uh, quite frankly, not played enough and has been injured this year and has been frustrating. And it, you could argue that even if he comes back, has already lost his job to Carrington Valentine, a seventh round draft pick. Um, 2021. Oh yeah. Just said Stokes second round, Josh Myers They pass on Creed Humphrey and get Josh Myers. Uh, and Josh Myers has not been great. And then I think that's where we can comfortably end and say like, that's we, we like the three years rule of, evaluating draft classes so like and then you look at not only those first two rounds but he's also just like missed on a lot of players um i like his philosophy and it's a lot easier to criticize him when the team ends up like this when his ultimate plan does not work out but it's also like the first year of that ultimate plan it's the Mm -hmm. first year of his second window as general manager um so there's a lot to play out but you know, it's it's fair to question Brian Gudikins right now. It's very fair. Yeah, and I, I I do think his first window, he did a fantastic job. Yes, like overall, I I I do think Brian is still a fantastic GM, but you know that that Jordan Love pick is just going to be a massive stain if this does not work out on his yep. resume. Like it's 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 going to be tough. It's going to be I tough mean, if if the team continues to not make any growth this season and the same story for next year, then that he will probably be fired unless he, you know, drafts whoever with the second overall pick next year. And that rookie is instantly, you know, rookie of the year and MVP, like, uh, (laughs) like, yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, Brian Gutekind's career depends on this year and next year and same, same for Matt LaFleur as well. You're very set on that second uh, overall pick, aren't you? I, I guess so. I'm, I'm getting my hopes up, and it's a shame that, <laughs> man, yeah, if only Rodgers did not get hurt week one and we could have pick two and, like, 25. That would have been amazing. Heck, yeah. Uh, but, hey, I mean, look, the, this season, the script is not written for the season yet. A lot can change uh, quickly. Um. Okay. I think that's all we need to talk about. I, we've that was we spent a lot longer time than I anticipated on Jordan Love and Brian Gudikin then. Um but let's let's talk about the injury report for the Packers, which is lengthy. Um so Jair Alexander dealing with that back injury. Matt called him day to day. And you know, with back injuries, those can somehow like those can quickly turn into a minor problem to out for the season and never play in the same. I mean, that was pretty much the case with Zedaria Smith. Um, you, you know, if you recall, you had in 2021 started that first game against the saints in Jacksonville uh, played like 18 snaps. And then like all of a sudden was out for the rest of the season in a very mysterious case. So back injuries are concerning, but I hear not Darius Smith. You know, I just, I really hate that man. We, I feel we we can talk. That's another conversation for a later day. Even though that's that is another conversation. But even I just though, hate him so much. Even it though it's to, like it continue. has to be brought up. It just it has does. to. Yeah. Yeah. That is anyway. 
Uh, but yeah, so Jair did not participate on Thursday, was participating uh, today, Thursday. So we'll see what his uh, status is for Sunday's game. I'm guessing it's going to be questionable or doubtful. I don't think they'll rule him out just considering that he is practicing today. You have Zane Anderson, who is allegedly a player for the Packers, is allegedly a real pe- person, but we don't have real proof on that yet. Um, but he is allegedly dealing with a hamstring injury. Uh, other notable ones, Devondre, ankle injury that has held him out, uh, limited all this week. Elton dealing with that knee injury, limited all this week, but he did play last week, so I would think he's going to play. Aaron Jones with his hammy. Did not participate on Wednesday, limited on Thursday. Haven't heard anything on him today. Luke Musgrave, he is likely going to be out for a week, uh, a few weeks, um, because Kareem Jackson wanted to make a name for himself and made a dirty hit. Yeah. Um, also but, a guy who I hate with the burning passion, but continue. Yes. Uh, and then you have Josh Myers in with an ankle injury that he suffered last week. Zach Tom stepped in for him for a drive or two, and it looked good. It looked better than Josh Myers out there at center. Yash Nyman dealing with an injury as well. Uh, Preston Smith did not, he had an illness this week, did not participate on Thursday, uh, but he was there on Friday. So he should be fine. Then Christian Watson, uh, full participation all this week. And then Devontae Wyatt, he suffered that knee injury last week against Denver, and he has been limited all this week. So there's a lot of injuries, uh, but hopefully hopefully they have a healthy slate on this Sunday. All right, on to the hated foes to the West, the Minnesota Vikings. They're coming off of a 22-17 to win over San Francisco. Big win for them. They're doing, uh, they're doing this without Justin Jefferson. Uh, he is on IR with a hamstring injury. But with that, the rookie wide receiver from USC, Jordan Addison, has stepped up. Uh, he had seven receptions on 10 targets last week against the 49ers defense, which is hashtag really good. Along for uh, 123 reception yards, two touchdowns. Uh, he had an amazing 60-yard catch um, against them. Uh, just just a, a really fast guy. Um, not only really fast, but twitchy, smooth at route running. Um, and he would be a guy that having Jair Alexander to go up against would be really nice. Um, uh-huh. You know, I Russell Douglas is great, but... I, I would be interesting to see how Russell would do against just such a a twitchy guy like Jordan Addison. Well, I mean, with him playing in the slot last year and being absolute dog doo doo, I would assume <laughs> he would not match up very well against Jordan Addison. But you know, you know, Joe Barry, he'll throw him out there against Jordan Addison all well, game and get cooked the entire night. So, or you know, he he could put lockdown corner Preston Smith on him. Oh, the, there we go. Let Joe solved. Barry cook. Let oh, yeah. him let him get in the lab and cook up some stuff that nobody has that's never oh, been yeah. done before for good reason. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> oh, brother. We'll see what the plan is to cover Jordan Addison on Sunday, and then also for the Vikings offense, Kirk Cousins. I have become, dare I say, a supporter of the Kirk Cousins narrative. I, you can put the Joe, you can quote me and saying that Kirk Cousins is a good quarterback. I hate to admit it. Okay. But he is a solid quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, he's a goofy guy, too. Um, you know, he's cringe. I, he has full cringe. I, I, mean, I, I don't care for him at all. I don't have a good Margaret Thatcher quote to defend him, unfortunately. Um, Disgusting. But, He's he's playing solid quarterback right now. 2057 yards, uh 68.9 completion percentage, 16 touchdowns for five interceptions. I feel like that has to be close to the lead for touchdowns. Let me look that up. Probably. I would assume so. Um, but yeah, he's playing good, uh, even without Justin Jefferson, even without the threat of Dalvin Cook. And uh Matt LaFleur was very complimentary of his uh former player um this past week, saying he's playing the best football of his career. Uh, okay. Yeah. Kirk Cousins is second right behind Josh Allen, uh, who 
has an advantage because he played on Thursday night, obviously. Uh, interesting. Yeah, interesting. interesting. He's, yeah, he's one ahead of Patrick Mahomes. So there we go. there's that. Vikings offense, good for Kirk Cousins, I guess. Um, and then also, you know, their offensive line, Vikings is not great. They're allowing the eighth highest pressure rate against opposing teams. Well, I guess that's kind of implied, but um, <laughs> allowing the eighth highest pressure rate, um, you know, their center Garrett Bradbury always seems to have a rough day with Kenny Clark. So okay. I'm I'm looking forward to that because Kenny he hasn't had too uh, too noticeable of a performance yet. So I think he always takes a few weeks to wind up, and I feel like there's been plenty of games in the past where it's the Vikings that he fully like unleashes on. Oh yeah. So uh, there's that would be very nice pressure for Cousins. Uh, on to the defense side of the ball for them. They obviously have Brian Flores as their defense coordinator, who, even though, you know, you can say what you want about him as a head coach, he is clearly a smart defensive mind. Really wish the Packers would have uh, fired Joe Barry and got Brian Flores this past season, but oh well. Flores is dialing up some pressure. Uh, He currently, the Vikings defense currently has a blitz rate of 58.6, the highest in the league. I think the second closest to them is the Patriots, and they're like 14 percentage points (laughs) off. So, the Vikings are sending everyone and their brother. So uh, Jordan Love kind of talked about that this week, just having to face up against that interesting defense. I think the closest one in comparison would be the Falcons defense earlier in the season. Um, I don't know if the Falcons blitz as often. Um, I mean, they definitely do on third downs, but they have some exotic blitz packages that we talked about. So this will be another tough test for Jordan Love having to go up against the defense. I mean, like Steve Spagnola in Kansas city, even though like Jordan love is a completely different player than we saw 2021 when he had to play Kansas city, but Steve Spagnola pretty much put tape out there that if you just blitz Jordan love over and over again, that's a winning formula. So yeah. I'm sure that will be part of Flores uh, game plan this week. Yeah. Prayers up to our offensive line, man. If, Jeez, they couldn't. They can't block for one second versus the Broncos. I don't know how how long they're going to be able to block against the Vikings. Yeah, I mean they don't eat, like the Vikings don't even have like that all that much talent on the defensive end. Um, but hey, they got they, Dean Lowry though. They do future Hall of Famer oh, Dean Lowry. Man, this just reminds me of the TikTok I shared on Twitter of the guy whose brain has rotted due to fantasy football mind. Um, you know. <laughs> where he's like talking about the key losses the Packers had this offseason, and he mentioned Dean Lowry in the same conversation <laughs> as Aaron Rodgers. Oh, Dean Lowry, his revenge game. Dean Lowry also talked crap about the Packers when he signed with the Vikings. Uh, oh, yeah. So hopefully, I'm I'm hoping like Royce Newman absolutely owns Dean Lowry. Um, I was we had a, a era of underage Packers where we loved Dean Lowry. We oh, had, yeah. we had like every week we'd add to our, our rhyming nickname for Dean Lowry. I can't even remember. It was like me and Dean eating green, blowing up the screen. Dean Lowry. <laughs> um, oh, those are the good old days. I love that. I love that. That was so yeah. much fun. Do you remember when Dean Lowry got a pick six against, I think the, the Browns, Oh my it was god! The it was the Bucks. The Bucks. That was okay. Amazing. Yeah, that was amazing. Uh, big boy running. Oh, we love yeah. we love big boy touchdowns. We do. Um, Shout out to the Packers. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So Dean Lowry revenge game. Vikings currently have the fifth highest uh, quarterback hurry rate in the league. So Flores is being aggressive for a reason. With that being said, let's let's move on to our superlatives for this week, and then we'll wrap it up. First off, our biggest key to victory here, for me, it's winning the turnover battle. Uh, there was only 49 points scored in the Vikings win against the 49ers last weekend, uh, but I think there's only one point punt in the whole entire game because like, uh, there was just so many turnovers. They intercepted Brock Purdy twice, so... I mean, and that's how bad teams beat good teams. Um, yeah. So, like, I mean, I'm not saying that the Packers are a good team that the pa- or that the Vikings will have to do that against, but 
let's just like follow the opposite path of the 49ers and try to not have turnovers. Simple as that. If I was yeah. Packers, I would just simply not have an interception or fumble. Big B, what do you got for us? I, I feel like this was one before, but it's just staying ahead of the sticks. Yeah. Like, it just it's just so annoying. Like, every week there's like – 50% of the drives, we always get behind the sticks at some point, and it's always a disaster. And, like, the final drivers, the Broncos, Elton Jenkins got that holding call, put us back, pretty much threw off the entire momentum of that drive. And, like, just don't get a holding call. Don't do anything stupid. <laughs> just, yeah. just play smart football. Be disciplined, please, for once. Please. That might be too much to ask. I don't know, man. I don't know. It feels like a lot to ask, but it's not much to ask. But they uh, won't listen, so <laughs> I don't know why I'm still rambling on about this. Just <laughs> fix it, please. Yes. On to uh, our biggest concern for me, it's just the offensive line holding up right for four quarters. Well, we'll see how that goes. Uh, <laughs> Big B, what, is, what are you losing sleep over this weekend? Um, Starting out slow again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I I think that's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, you know, zero points in the first half ain't going to win you football games. Three points in the first half, not going to win you football games. Even six points might not even win you games. So, you know, I'm tired of this. I, I just yeah. want I want to have a come. You know, this is crazy, crazy for me to ask for. But I want to have a complete game one time, one time this season. Is that allowed? Will it ever happen? Probably not. But you know, that's why that's wild for me to ask. But I'm going. I'm swinging for the fences here. <laughs> yeah, that might be too big of an ask. But yeah, I I don't know what the problem is with that. <sighs> uh, all right. Finally, who is going off? Who is going to eat? After I talked trash about him earlier, I'm going with Jordan Love. <laughs> this is a game where he turns it around. He goes out there against a hungry. Pressure heavy Vikings defense, and he he just dimes them up. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, oh, nice. Big B, who do you got going off? You know, Kashawn Nixon. We got we got Kashawn Nixon. He he is due for a massive punt return, massive kick return, massive whatever return. He's he's due for a good defensive game. He's due for an interception on defense. Yep. He's due he's due to just ball out and. I'm just waiting for it. I love Kashawn Nixon. He's yeah. he's a he's an animal. I love him. He's a special teams monster. Haven't seen it this year. Haven't seen his old self. This week, I think we will see the old Kashawn Nixon burst out onto the scenes versus the Minnesota Vikings at Lambeau Field. Baby. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, I mean, his best play of, of his uh, career so far was against the Vikings last year. So hopefully we can replicate that. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Um Hey, I just realized maybe the Packers were right. Maybe excitement is growing for this game because after talking about it, I'm I'm looking forward to this game. Packers oh Vikings Sunday. What is it? A twelve o'clock kickoff? Maybe I think so. No, I think, yes, yes, I think so. Twelve o'clock kickoff. Uh, so we are looking forward to it. We appreciate you tuning into this episode. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and make sure to subscribe. Follow us on all those socials. We'd greatly really appreciate it. But that being said, we'll talk to you later. Go Pack Go. Let's get a three wins on the season. Yes.